For a long time, people were made to believe by Christian pastors and preachers that before the second coming of Jesus, there shall appear a man of lawlessness, or the man of sin, who's also believed as the Antichrist. This man will claim himself to be a god and will deceive many. This man of lawlessness became identified with the Roman Emperor Nero, historical figures such as Napoleon and Adolf Hitler, and religious leaders such as the Catholic Pope. In this video, we will share with you what we have learned from the Bible revelations of the late teacher Arano Evangelista from the website www.tname.ph, about who the real man of lawlessness was. The Bible verses we will be reading are from the New International Version. Let us begin our reading in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1-2, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report a letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1-2. As we can read from the passage, the topic is about the so-called second coming of Jesus. To continue our reading, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. As we can read in the passage, people are being made aware of a time when the man of lawlessness would be revealed. Who is this man of lawlessness? In what manner will the identity of this man be known by all? Let us continue our reading, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 4-6. As we can read from the passage, this man of lawlessness will oppose God's commandments, and set himself up and will proclaim himself to be a god. The passage also reads so that he may be revealed at the proper time. According to the late teacher Evangelista, the teachings of this man of lawlessness have been deceiving mankind and will be revealed in a proper time. Question, why is it that the identity of this man of lawlessness has not been revealed and known? For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. As the passage says, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, meaning the identity of the real man of lawlessness had not yet been known. Mankind will discover that they have been living under a great deception all this time under the teachings of this man of lawlessness. How will the man of lawlessness be revealed? And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. As the passage says, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth later on, we will learn how Jesus will reveal who the man of lawlessness is. Is it true that mankind was already deceived by the teachings of the man of lawlessness? How was the deception carried out? The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 9-10 to The deception came in the form of rituals the driving out of demons, the promise of the kingdom of God that is not known and of miraculous healings. What did God do? For this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11. Because people refused to seek God's true commandments and followed the teachings of the man of lawlessness. The people lived under God's curse. Let us learn more about what God said before regarding His blessing and curse, see. I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse the blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today the curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods, which you have not known. Deuteronomy 11, verses 26-28. God through his prophet Moses, had already given us a choice to either live under his blessing or curse. Like Adam and his wife Eve in the Garden of Eden. God gave us free will. A choice on how we lead our lives. 
we can enjoy a good and happy life if we follow his commandments but, we will suffer pain and hardships if we disobey them and worship other gods we have not known. How will we know if we are experiencing blessings or curses from God? Let us read in Deuteronomy 28 verses 58 to 61, If you do not carefully follow all the words of this law, which are written in this book, and do not revere this glorious and awesome name the Lord your God the Lord will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters and severe and lingering illnesses. He will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt that you dreaded, and they will cling to you. The Lord will also bring on you every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book of the law, until you are destroyed. Deuteronomy 28, verses 58 to 61. We can understand the spread of virulent viruses like the ongoing COVID-19 virus, monkeypox, AIDS, and deadly natural disasters such as destructive hurricanes, wildfires, and earthquakes that were not recorded nor experienced in the time of Moses are signs we are living under God's curse. This is because we followed the teachings of the mysterious man of lawlessness all this time. We did not follow God's true commandments and we do not call on His true name. Now that we learned how our present suffering was brought about by the false teachings of this secret man of lawlessness, the question will be, is there a Bible prophecy that speaks of the time when this man of lawlessness, who made himself known as a God, had deceived many, and caused suffering to mankind, will be exposed. Let us read Isaiah 14 verses 9 to 20. The grave below is all astir to meet you at your coming it rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you all those who were leaders in the world it makes them rise from their thrones all those who were kings over the nations. Isaiah 14 verse 9. The passage speaks of the coming time once the whole world finally knows who the secret man of lawlessness really is. The passage also said, makes them rise from their thrones, meaning, the leaders of religions, nations, and organizations will be surprised to learn the real identity of the man of lawlessness. What will they say? Let us read Isaiah 14 verse 10. They will all respond, they will say to you, you also have become weak, as we are you have become like us. Isaiah 14, verse 10. Their reaction is because the man whom they thought was holy and without sin was the secret man of lawlessness, all this time. To continue our reading, all your pomp has been brought down to the grave, along with the noise of your harps maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. Isaiah 14, verse 11. We can understand from the passage how people of the world will realize this man's claims about his own divinity were just pompous claims and is even what led him to his cruel death. The passage also says, Worms cover you because contrary to everyone's belief, this man never rose from the dead. To continue our reading, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Isaiah 14 verse 12. The secret man of lawlessness will now be known as the morning star. Let us read the same Bible verse in another Bible version, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weak in the nations? Isaiah 14 verse 12. King James Version. As we can understand from the passage, the word Lucifer was used to replace the term morning star in the prophecy. Let us also read this Bible verse in other Bible versions, You, the bright morning star, have fallen from the sky. You brought down other nations now you are brought down. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Contemporary English Version. And to read in another version, King of Babylon, bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. In the past you conquered nations, but now you have been thrown to the ground. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Good News Translation. It is clear. In other Bible versions the term bright morning star is what is written. It was replaced with the word or title Lucifer in other versions. This means the real story of Lucifer or the bright morning star is not about a fallen angel or about Satan. It is about a man whom everyone thought to be divine, sinless, and whose gospel teachings dominated the world but whose true identity will be exposed as one who was punished by God because his teachings deceived humankind and made them suffer even more. This is also why he is known as the man of lawlessness. Question, why in Isaiah 14 verse 12 the passage says, Fallen from heaven? 
because everyone believed that this mysterious man went up to heaven, people will be shocked to learn that his death was because of his own wrongdoing. All will be surprised to know that this man never left the earth. Let us learn the real identity of the man of lawlessness or bright morning star. Let us read 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 14. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. 2 Samuel 7 verse 12. The promise was given to David. A descendant will come from his bloodline. What would be the work of the descendant? Let us read verse 13. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 2 Samuel 7 verse 13. The task is to build a house for the name of God. The first choice was King Solomon a real son or descendant of David as written in 1 Chronicles 22 9 13. What was the promise of God? Let us continue our reading. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. 2 Samuel 7 verse 14. Just like Adam, the prophesied offspring of David was given a choice or free will. To everyone's knowledge, the first chosen from the lineage of King David for the said prophecy in 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 14 was Solomon the direct descendant or son of King David. King Solomon was able to build a house for God's name as recorded in 1 Chronicles 22, 9-13, but he failed to make God's name known to his fellow Israelites because he built other temples for the gods of his foreign wives, as recorded in 1 Kings 11 verses 1-13. After King Solomon, the next to be chosen from the line of David to continue the unfinished work was Jesus. We can read this in Luke 1 verse 27 to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Luke 1 verse 27. Through this passage, we now know that the true father of Jesus was Joseph who belonged to the house of David. Let's continue reading in Luke 1, verses 31 to 32, You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Luke 1, verses 31 to 32, it is clearly written, Jesus was the offspring or descendant of David who could only be given the title Son of God. He is not a direct Son of God. Question, is there any other passage in the Bible where we can read that Jesus came from the line of David? Answer, let us read Matthew 1 verse 1, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew 1 verse 1. With a said passage, we can see how the prophecy in 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 14 about a coming descendant of David was now fulfilled through Jesus. Let us read again the prophecy and pay full attention to what God said in 2 Samuel 7 verse 14, I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. 2 Samuel 7, verse 14. According to God's word in the said passage, if the descendant of David does wrong, he would be punished with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. Is it true that Jesus, the descendant of King David, was punished by the rod and floggings of men? Let us read Matthew 27 verses 25 to 26. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged, and handed him over to be crucified. Matthew 27 verses 25 to 26. Indeed, Jesus was flogged by men, as God stated in the prophecy in 2 Samuel 7 verse 14, I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. Now friends, let us open our eyes and understand what God clearly said, did God say in the prophecy that the descendant of David who is Jesus will be flogged by men for the sins of mankind? The answer is no. God clearly said that such floggings will happen to David's descendant, none other than Jesus once he commits wrong. Therefore, Jesus' painful death is undeniable proof that he failed in his mission, that he died for his wrongdoing, and not for mankind's salvation. 
One of the greatest wrongs that Jesus committed can be read in Matthew 16 verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew 16 verse 18. Jesus was sent by God to lead his people to know his name through the house that was built by King Solomon before. Instead, he built another house in his own name. Jesus had put up his own church which was not part of his work as specified in the prophecies. This deception was used as the foundation of the faith of many religions. By building a church in his own name, Jesus had made himself to be known as a God rather than making his fellow Israelites know the true name of God. Is it true he claimed to be a God? What did he say when he was still alive? Let us read now in Isaiah 14 verse 13. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven I will raise my throne above the stars of God I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. Isaiah 14 verse 13. Did Jesus make such a claim as mentioned in the prophecy? Let us read in Luke 22 verses 69 to 70. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying I am. Luke 22 verses 69 to 70. We can read how Jesus said such words. He wanted to go up to heaven and wanted people to know and accept that he was the Son of God when in reality he is only a descendant of King David. What else did Jesus say? In Isaiah 14 verse 14, we can read, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14 verse 14. Let us read how Jesus said such words in John 10 verses 29 to 30. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. John 10 verses 29 to 30. Jesus really wanted to be like God. Through the deceptions of the religions, people believe that Jesus is a God. He said that he will ascend to the heavens. Is he really in heaven? Let us read Isaiah 14 verse 15. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Isaiah 14 verse 15. As it has been prophesied, he died as a result of the punishment inflicted upon him, for his iniquity. The claims of the apostles and religious preachers about Jesus being in heaven are not true. Let us continue our reading in Isaiah 14 verse 16. Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate, is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble, Isaiah 14 verse 16. Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate, this is now happening through this revelation, people will now ponder on Jesus' disappointing fate. The passage also says, is this the man? People will now know that Jesus is the real man of lawlessness and he will now be known as the bright morning star or Lucifer. Everyone will realize how his teachings cause the division and suffering that we are all experiencing at present. Let us continue our reading in Isaiah 14 verse 17. The man who made the world a desert, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home. Isaiah 14 verse 17. As we can understand from the passage, because of Jesus' false teachings being followed by humanity, the world was under God's curse. Let us continue our reading in Isaiah 14 verses 18 to 19. All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your tomb like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword, those who descend to the stones of the pit. Like a corpse trampled underfoot, Isaiah 14 verses 18 to 19. He died and did not really rise up from the dead. What was his other sign? In Isaiah 14 verse 20, we can read, You will not join them in burial, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. The offspring of the wicked will never be mentioned again. Isaiah 14 verse 20. As the passage reads, You will not join them in burial. Jesus is still nailed to the cross in the churches. Question, is the morning star Satan as told by the religions? Let us read Revelation 12 verse 9. The great dragon was hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Revelation 12 verse 9. Clearly, there is only one Satan that is also the dragon, the serpent, and the devil. Satan is not a man as question, is it really true that the bright morning star mentioned in the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 14 is not Satan? Let us read Revelation 20 verse 2. 
he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Revelation 20, verse 2. The Holy Bible is consistent regarding the identity of Satan. He is not the symbolic morning star or Lucifer as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 14. Question, how do we know that this Bible revelation is not about discrediting Jesus? If we read again in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. The passage says that Jesus will expose who the man of lawlessness is, the man who is also the symbolic morning star or Lucifer. Let us read how Jesus will expose the man in Revelation 22 verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright morning star. Revelation 22 verse 16. Jesus admitted he is the bright morning star prophesied in Isaiah 14 verses 9 to 20, the secret man of lawlessness. By admitting he is an offspring of David, it purports that he made an admission that he is truly the descendant of David who was punished by God with the floggings of men for his own wrongdoing. Truly, Jesus was the secret man of lawlessness. Also since we learn this revelation through the late Dieter Evangelista's Bible expositions from the website www.name.ph, it is clear that he is not an enemy of Jesus. He was the angel or messenger sent to testify or expose the truth about how Jesus is only the root and offspring of David and therefore not a direct son of God, and also the bright morning star or Lucifer. Let us understand why the word angel was used in Revelation 22 verse 16. People were misled by the religions into thinking that when it says angel in the Bible, it generally speaks about a spiritual being, sometimes with wings. Is this true? Let us read Hosea 12 verse 4. He struggled with the angel and overcame him he wept and begged for his favor. He found him at Bethel and talked with him there. Hosea 12 verse 4. In Hosea 12 verse 4 we can read that Jacob struggled with an angel of God. What does this angel look like? Let us read Genesis 32 verses 24 to 26. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis 32 verses 24 to 26. It is clear that the man whom Jacob wrestled with was an angel. Therefore, the term angel in Revelation 22 verse 16 does not necessarily mean a spiritual being but a man sent by God to proclaim his message. Thus, Revelation 22 verse 16 speaks of a man mentioned before by Jesus, when he was still alive, whom God will send to testify or reveal the truth about who he, Jesus, really is. That he is not a son of God or God but a descendant of David who died for his own wrongdoing, and that he is the despised bright morning star spoken in one of the prophecies in the Old Testament. We may now understand that there is only one man who was given the authority by God to explain Jesus' true nature and mission. Let us now learn who wrote the book of Revelation? Is he an apostle of Jesus as claimed by the religions? The late teacher Evangelista reveals to us the true identity of the writer of the book of Revelation. In Revelation 22 verses 8 to 9. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Revelation 22 verses 8 to 9. The religions assume that the author of the book was the man they call John the divine, an apostle. However, the book of Revelation was written by John of Patmos, who was also a prophet of God. The passage also reads, Worship God. This means we should worship God and not Jesus. Teacher Evangelista once said that if Jesus had successfully fulfilled his mission as written in the prophecies, there would be no need for the book of Revelation. Question, is it true that the apostles made false testimonies about Jesus? Let us read Revelation 2 verse 2. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, 
that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Revelation 2, verse 2. As we can read in the said passage, it is true that the apostles made false testimonies about Jesus in their writings. They did not reveal to us the truth that Jesus was only a descendant of David prophesied in 2 Samuel 7, verses 12-14 and that his death was for his own wrongdoing. With this exposition about the apostles and their writings in the so-called New Testament, we may now understand that the Bible contains both the true and false teachings made about God. You might ask, how was Teacher Evangelista able to disclose the true teachings of God and the false writings that were included in them? How do we even know that Teacher Evangelista's biblical explanation and exposition is indeed the message of the true living God and not from his own research or self-interpretation? What is his authority from God? Let us read Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 to 19. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 to 19. As the passage says, the coming prophet promised by God is like Moses. He will have the authority to speak on God's behalf as he is God's sole spokesperson in our time, just as Moses was during his time. The passage also reads from among their brothers. This means that the coming prophet will not be of Jewish descent. It means that the chosen one will come from a foreign race that God will call to be his people. In the passage, God said, I will put my words in his mouth. God assures us that what the prophet like Moses proclaims comes directly from him. The prophet sent forth like Moses does not need to do research on the Holy Bible as to what he will say regarding the Word of God. This is why he is able to show the true teachings and the false writings in the Bible because of the guidance that God will provide him. Most importantly in Deuteronomy 18 verse 19, God said that his prophet like Moses, will speak in his name. The sign that this coming prophet is truly from God is that he will disclose to us the true name of God. This purports that when it comes to the Word of God, especially his name, there is only one man who was given authority by God to speak about it and this is the prophet like Moses through the website www.name.ph, teacher Erano Evangelista fulfilled his task as the real prophet like Moses promised by God in Deuteronomy 18 verses 18 to 19 when he made known the real name of God and the real identity of Jesus in the scriptures. He was not able to divulge such exceptional knowledge from studying the scriptures in a theological school or on his own. It was all revealed to him by the one true living God. God was the one who put the exact words in teacher Evangelista's mouth that communicates the real explanation of his words in the scriptures that were written by his former prophets long ago. This exposition is just an overview of the real Jesus that God wants us to know in the Bible. You may read the full Bible revelation about Jesus and the great name of God in the website links we shared in the description section below. Let us now know God's true name, His true teachings, and the real identity of Jesus in the Bible, by visiting the website www.name.ph. The website does not promote a new religion or faith, but only to share God's true message. Also, to receive notifications about the latest videos regarding Teacher Evangelista's Bible Revelations. Kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.